Thank you for viewing this Danfoss Drives extended startup video. This video will provide quick startup instructions for a Danfoss VLT FC102 HVAC drive. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Hi, my name is Jeff Olson. I'm with Danfoss Drives, and today I'm here to show you how to do a quick startup on the Danfoss VLT HVAC drive. It's going to consist of using a quick menu, quick setup to go through a group of parameters that are edited on a regular basis, as well as wiring your start command and speed reference that will be supplied by an external control. To start the process, we're going to put the drive into North American defaults. To do this, press the main menu key two times. Starting with main menu group zero operation display, press the OK key to enter that menu. Followed by group 0-0 basic settings, again press the OK key to enter that menu. And scroll down two times until we reach parameter 0-03 regional settings. To initiate a change, we first must press the OK key to highlight the value, and at that point, we can use the up and down arrows to scroll through the selections. Once I find North America, press the OK key to accept the change. Once that change has been made, you should notice that the drive goes into an Alarm 60 external interlock. Here we see the alarm light is blinking. This is due to Digital Input 27 being set as a default safety interlock terminal that currently is not addressed. We will address this later. But for now, we're going to ignore the alarm and continue on. Next, press the Quick Menu key and scroll down to Q2 Quick Setup. Press the OK key to enter that menu. The Quick Setup consists of a list of common parameters that are all in ascending order. We're going to move through those and make the appropriate selections, starting out with the language. Currently, English is selected, so I'm going to move on to the next parameter down in the list by pressing the Down key. The next five parameters are associated with the connected motor data. Starting with parameter 121, enter the motor horsepower as seen on the connected motor's nameplate. For our example, we're using a three-quarter horsepower motor, so I'll enter the next five parameters according to my motor nameplate. Press the OK key to make a change. Enter the correct value, and again, OK key to accept that change. Once the change has been accepted, you can move down to the next parameter in the list, which is motor voltage. Next, we have motor frequency, which should be 60 hertz by default. That's as a result of the North America change we made previously. Moving down to the next parameter here, motor current, set that as appropriate. Motor nominal speed is the next parameter in the list. And next parameter down, 128, motor rotation check. We're going to skip this for now and complete the motor rotation check after the quick setup. Move down to the next parameter. Ramp 1, ramp up time. This is the time it will take for the drive to ramp from 0 to full speed. Setting too short of or too aggressive of a ramp up time can result in overcurrent or torque limit warnings. I'm going to enter a value of 15 seconds. This parameter is application specific. Moving down to the next parameter, ramp down time. Ramp down time is defined as the time it takes to drive to ramp from full speed to zero. Setting too short or too aggressive of a ramp down time can result in over voltage warnings or alarms due to regenerative energy. I'm going to set this value to 15 seconds as well. Press the OK key to accept that value and move on to the next parameter. Here we have 412 motor low speed limit. This parameter simply means whatever is value is set in the motor low speed limit, the drive will never operate at a speed below that value, regardless of the reference signal. I'm going to enter a value of 20 hertz. Moving down to the motor high speed limit, the default is 60 hertz. If you were to change that, the drive would never operate at a frequency higher than the entered value here. Moving on to the next parameter in the list, I have parameter 311 jog speed. This is normally not applicable for HVAC applications, so we're going to skip on to the next parameter. 
Here I have parameter 512, terminal 27 digital input. Currently, the default value is set to external interlock, which is what's causing the alarm right now. I'm going to set this to no operation by selecting number 0 in the menu and pressing OK to accept that change. The alarm reset automatically, so we're going to move on to the next parameter. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to wire to that if you choose to. The next parameter in the list are the relay functions. When, the first time you press the OK key, you'll see that it'll highlight this value 0 in the parenthesis. 0 is associated with relay 1, so to manipulate or change the function of relay 1, I would leave the 0, move down, pressing the OK key to the value, make my selection and press OK. Now we come back up to the array number. If I change this to the value 1, that's associated with programming relay 2. Press the OK key and then you make your selection. Currently, running is the default value. So, by default, relay 1 is set to no alarm, and we would wire to the normally closed contact at, on, the, on that relay to, for alarm indication. Relay 2 is currently set to running. You would wire to the normally open contact of relay 2 for run indication. I'm going to press the back key and move on to the next parameter. Parameter 129, automatic motor adapt adaptation. By selecting the value enable complete AMA, the drive is going to make a dynamic test of the motor, including the impedance of the cable. To press the OK key to enable the complete AMA. It's going to tell me to press the hand on key to start that process. As soon as I do, it'll begin. This process could take anywhere from two to five minutes depending on the size of the drive. Notice the progress bar and it tells me that the steps are progressing. I should also note that the process should be executed on a room temperature motor. The, the shaft of the motor will not turn and there won't be any rotational force there so it's safe to do so to a coupled load. Now the screen says press OK to finish AMA. So the process was completed and successful. Pressing OK will accept the values. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now my quick setup is complete. At this point, we need to wire the start command and speed reference signal that will normally come from a remote source. I'll show you how to do that momentarily. After the quick setup is complete, we have to wire our start command, our safety input if desirable, and finally your speed reference signal. 100% of Danfoss drives, digital input 18 is the default start input. We're going to make a connection between terminal 12 on the control board, which is 24 volt power, to terminal 18 via a normally open switch. That will be your start contact. If you desire to wire to terminal 27 and use that as a safety interlock, we'll wire a normally closed contact between terminal 12, again 24 volt control power, and digital input 27. We would program parameter 512, which manipulates the function of terminal 27 to the value external interlock. Just like we saw in the example when I set the quick setup, Opening the contact between 24 volts and terminal 27 when program is external interlock will generate an alarm 60 and release all energy to the motor. Finally, the speed reference terminal must be wired between terminal 53 and 55. 53 is the positive wire, 55 is common. By default, analog input 53 on the drive, which is defined by as the reference resource is scaled to accept 0 to 10 volt signals that are proportional of to 0 to 60 hertz. If you need to change the scaling of that terminal, you do so in main menu group 6. Press the main menu key two times, scroll down to group 6, analog in and out, 6-1, analog input 53, and here we find the terminal 53 low voltage, terminal 53 high voltage, 
and the corresponding speeds that are associated with those voltages. Terminal 53, low reference value, by default is 0 hertz, and terminal 53, high reference value, by default is 60 hertz. If I need to change this to be a 2 to 10 volt signal rather than a 0 to 10 volt signal, I'll simply go and change parameter 610 to 2 volts. And now I've scaled the input 2 volts to 10 volts is equivalent to 0 to 60 hertz. At that point, closing the contact between terminal 12 and 18 will start the drive and the speed is changed dependent on the signal wired to analog input 53. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.